we have, um, okay, we have return to service two minutes. So can I ask uh, group one, what has to be working again in two minutes? Anh chị nhóm 1 ơi, thì thầy muốn hỏi là xem ở trên cái bộ phận của mình ấy, thì là 2 phút là trong cái công trình gì mà mình cần nhanh thế uh, Ok, so um, for the operation control center, uh, hmm. the power is very important because hmm. if we uh, like the power, we cannot uh, track the flies, we cannot send the CFP, um, so we really don't want to delay for uh, for this. Okay. Uh, actually, actually, mm -hmm. uh, we uh, we need uh, it is, um, to be back uh, immediately. However, it must um, um, generate um, the generator. You know, so uh, I think two minutes is uh, acceptable to get okay. back the power. Yeah. So, um. Can I ask, and so what we're trying to do now, and I'm thinking maybe I haven't explained it clearly, but it's good to go through this exercise is how long before the airline will not be able to fulfill its service? So the aircraft are flying, is it that the aircraft won't be able to depart? What, what, is, what happens after two minutes? Uh -huh. So the, in yeah, the, two minutes of our power, hmm. what will happen? Hmm. To the airline's ability to deliver its service. Yeah. Um, to the airline. Hmm. So what, yeah, what we're trying to do is think, okay, each department wants to be working probably real time, but when does it start impacting the airline? But, the service delivery of the airline. Hmm. The airline uh, in general or uh, operation control this part? Well, let's well, uh, say dispatching aircraft, um, loading aircraft. But, but, yeah. Dispatching um, and loading aircraft, for example. Hmm. In two minutes, um, for the function of uh, operation control and dispatch is to um, send the CFP for the pilot. Mm -hmm. And um, even we have uh, two minutes uh, like a power, I think um, it's um, still okay. It's still mm. okay, yeah. So I would expect to see, I mean, not, not quite clear what, what the role is, but I would expect it would be an hour or an hour? Uh, by the time the pilots have, have have had their briefing, is it is it tighter than an hour? Is it less than an hour before you, you the aircraft are actually not going to be on time? Mm. You expect one hour? No, I'm I'm just suggesting if it was an hour, what would happen if you were offline for an hour? Oh, one hour is mm. is really a matter for us if our power for one hour. Mm. So we just expect two minutes to get back. To yeah. Okay. Normal operation. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm not trying. What I'm trying to ex um, explore is how long before there is an impact on the airline service. So, so the question is, if a power was off for an hour, would aircraft be delayed? Sure. They would. Okay. If you were offline for 15 minutes, would you expect aircraft to be delayed? 15, yes. Yeah. I think, okay. I think uh, it affects. Okay. okay. So this is a really interesting point, but you are a true real-time operation or, or some parts of the yes. department. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. So just think for the other groups, just just to clear, what we're trying to establish is not how long before you won't be able to complete your operation or your objective. It's how long if you're not doing your objective before the airline is impacted, before the operation is impacted. 
Okay, so this is really interesting. This is a really critical real time function here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two minutes, five minutes, one day, it looks like. Is that one day? Or yeah. different different systems. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, and then some parts it would take a while before you'd have an impact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this is interesting. You've got a minor in five minutes. Yes. If it's minor, can I suggest maybe you could go some days without a telephone or a computer? Maybe. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just expect five minutes to get, uh, get yeah. change again, get a new one to um, yeah. continue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So if we can make a difference between what you expect and would like. <laughs> to <laughs> to what would actually matter yeah <laughs> so the reason this is quite important is because if we recall the triangle and that if you have a major disrupt and a lot of people a lot of functions are disrupted it needs to be the ability to prioritize what is really important now and what is important in an hour and what is important in to, this afternoon and what is important tonight and tomorrow and next week. Um, and so that's why this return to service is really important to understand, but be careful to recognize how long before the airline is impacted rather than the department is impacted, yeah. Okay, so we've got some really time critical functions in that group, in that department. Shall we have a look at market and sales now? So do we have the same question here? We've got 30 minutes before what happens after 30 minutes. So it's group two. Remember that you have high Anh Tuấn rồi. Anh Tuấn rồi. All right. Uh, that uh, we spike that uh, thirty minutes. Uh, we need to have the power, the power uh, again. That uh, to re uh, uh, to resume our operation. Can I ask why? Why thirty minutes? What happens after thirty minutes? Why the passenger, uh, the customer uh, cannot wait, uh, then we lost the uh, customer. All right. So this is the response to a customer booking, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Radio. Okay. So this is marketing and sales, is that? Yeah. And sales. Okay. I understand. Yep. And so that's the same reason for communications for IT. Okay, and this is interesting. You've correctly recognized that there are some aspects that can take, you can go quite a period of time before you have an impact. Yeah, excellent. This is really good. Um, I'm going to tell a story in a minute, which um, perhaps explains um, why this is really important. Great, thank you. That's group two, so group three. Okay, help desk, five minutes, two hours. So this is a help desk for customers or internal help desk or both? Oh, customer and uh, internal as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you think five minutes, it seems quite a short time. It might be, it would start to become perhaps frustrating for people. Uh, but Mm. Actually, it can immediately because when the power is off, we turn on the backup plan not almost immediately, but uh, we, uh, we it's five minutes. <laughs> okay, so the backup, okay, um, we're going to come back to um, exactly this one, which is line 26. So this is really good. The next exercise, probably exercise, this is exactly right. Thank you. Okay, and then we've got days and we've got immediately for specialist staff. That's because the staff have to be trained to be able to answer the questions, I assume. 
Is that correct? chị ơi trong cái về human resource này thì là có phải là immediate bởi vì là mình phải train cái staff để trả lời các câu hỏi đúng không? Theo mẫu đúng không? Tại sao lại là immediate? Immediately là because là cái stop mistake thì nếu phát hiện ra là mình khắc phục ngay. Okay. Uh, immediately should be uh, to recover like from the start mistake on the copy, Rosie. Mm -hmm. 29, so we need to, um, to to fix it immediately. Right, but what happens if if you don't? What happens, Wait. say, if it was if, an hour? Mm. If, if we cannot fix it immediately, uh, maybe we got some problem. Uh, we, we got some complaint from the customer. Maybe they got okay. some problem at the airport. Okay. Radio. Okay. This is, this is good, I think, but what people are doing are, is recognizing the importance of a customer. Yeah. And servicing the customer. It's really, I think, very important point to remember. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, so group four. Now, this is interesting one. We've got safety and quality, three to four, sorry, three to five minutes and five to 10 minutes. So, what happens after three to five minutes? Uh, for my group, um, mm -hmm. in the headquarters of the safety and quality department, mm -hmm. uh, we have a generator. And uh, when the power is off immediately, the generator automatically restart. Mm -hmm. And it takes uh, up to now uh, from long time, uh, normally, no no uh, interruption but uh, five uh, three to five minutes to just restart the computer if just in case okay so yeah, yeah. so i guess what, what i'm asking is not what happens or what you would like to happen is what happens to service delivery that is airline service delivery if you don't have power for the Safety and quality uh, department is mm -hmm. not uh, not uh, immediately to operation, mm -hmm. so uh, that that is not the the, the in emergency situation. Mm -hmm. It's just the major uh, situation if in case of no power to receive yeah. the, to receive information to receive uh, the communicate to uh, you know OC uh, and um, but operation immediately is, is not affected mm -hmm. this is this is important to make a distinction between the department being able to do what it does and the so what like so the department isn't working does that immediately affect the airlines operation? It, it matters in the long term, clearly, but in the short term, does it matter? Doesn't matter. Hmm. I would suggest safety and quality, which is a hugely important department, but normally that is not a department that is time critical, except perhaps in an emergency response, where it may have a role. Just um, in case of emergency, um, for the uh, communication, that is more important. The, the power here is um, unlikely uh, happen, and uh, we have another uh, another way to communicate to control the situation. So, what what situation are you controlling? Uh, we have um, telephone, we have a mail, we have um, fax, uh, mm. another, um, uh, another location, mm. not the headquarters. Headquarters just uh, telephone to receive, uh, to, to gather mm. team. For example, mm. for example, go team to gather uh, and receive the information uh, 
for 4G information, uh, mail information, uh, telephone information, and even the video information. Hmm. But is that information time critical? What I mean is, so I used to be part of safety and quality department once, and I could go on weekend. We could all go on weekend. The airline didn't stop. As long as we had were on call, it didn't matter. We could go. No. You know, hmm. Do you see the mm. difference? We, we weren't running the aircraft. We weren't managing passengers. We were analyzing incidents and doing analysis and monitoring operations. But it didn't matter if we'd stopped for a day or two. Hmm. Uh, no, so it, it depends on the situation. If in case mm. of emergency, so mm. the, the power here is, is not back to to the uh, control the situation. Uh, mm. For the safety and quality uh, department, uh, if in case of emergency, uh, the, the people, the, the human resource, mm. the head, uh, the board, the control board, the most important. The, the people who is the go team, who in the team to control the situation is more important. Mm, mm, mm. So the objective that is important is the emergency response objective, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Mm. So I think it's important to be very clear what is time important and what is not. So that the focus for really, the priority is always on what matters in the short term rather than the longer term. Mm. So is the emergency center in the same location? Is, is there an emergency center? Mm, um, in the uh, safety and quality department, uh, is in the headquarter, we have room for mm -hmm. the road team. Uh, already set, and the 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 backup, uh, the, mm. the backup. How, how to say the the kit, uh, one kit for the emergency. Mm. Uh, every time the emergency happen, uh, we have already have a kit, including the phone, uh, mm -hmm. computer, even money inside mm -hmm. to, to control the situation. Mm. So that is one function within the department that sounds to be time critical, but other functions probably are not. Yeah. Uh, which which function? Sorry, sorry. So uh, I don't know. Um, safety analysis that could stop for a short while, couldn't it? For a few days, perhaps. Well, what I'm trying to get to is been very clear what is time critical and what is not. Hmm. And, and where that is. So it seems like the main headquarters building is important because the emergency center is in the headquarters building. Is that right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Radio. Just, I'm just trying to pull apart what is time important and what is not. What is a return to service? critical and what is not. Mm. Okay, thank you. And group five. So, okay, so we can just go up to Ziva heading again. Uh, one more passenger service department. So, yeah, yeah. Firstly, five minutes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm a little, uh, five minutes uh, with the power because, uh, uh, you know, the power is very important. We, if we lose all the main power and the backup, everything will be suspended. And we mm. need to restore around in five minutes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And we've got 24 hours, 15 minutes, 24 hours. Yeah, and 15 minutes. So pretty time critical for the customer service or the airline service. Mm. Okay, um, I'm a little mindful of time now. Okay, thanks so much, everyone. Um, 
I was going to do another exercise, but we've, shall we, can we keep the sheet up for a moment, please? Yep. So as we talked through some, some people mentioned um, mitigations, um, as the backup powers mentioned clearly, um, a grab bag or the go teams equipment. Um, and I think there was some other mention of, oh, there was a backup plan. There, backup plan. So there are examples of the mitigation or the risk reduction or response plans to reduce the impact of a disruption. So the next exercise, what I was going to suggest is we put in another column and we write down what is the mitigation or what could be the mitigation to re reduce risk and improve the response. Um, so that, if this was a real exercise, that is the next step is to consider if we can reduce risk or if we can improve the readiness or if we can improve the response arrangements uh, for each of these risks. So we think back to the four R's, which was reduction, readiness, response, and recovery. So the next part of this exercise, if it was for real, would be to exactly do that. Think, how can we reduce this risk? The next one, how can we improve our readiness for disruption? Uh, how can we improve our readiness for disruption? And then the next one is, can we improve? That's right. So, so we, it's interesting, there's quite a lot of departments that are time critical and would really be vulnerable to a power outage. Now, it seems you, you have backup generators, but one solution may be that you put the time critical ones in a special, specially prepared building that recognizes how important they are and how they need connectivity and power, et cetera. Because sometimes um, um, several of the ex or the work I've done, and in fact, in New Zealand, the first one of the first things I found is we had so many generators. We had like eight different buildings with, that had to have backup generators just to keep the airline working. And this seemed crazy because it only took one generator not to start and we went flying airplanes. So one way we reduced risk was to slowly bring those time critical functions into two locations. And each location had two generators. So therefore we were reducing the likelihood that the dependence on so many generators. there's a very high chance one of them is not going to start when you need it. So it was, a, it was an interesting exercise and it took quite a long time having risk profile of a, a company to reduce risk because it means moving departments around um, to get all the time critical functions into hard, what we call hardened sites, modern, well-built buildings with two generators each 
So far, we had very high confidence that they would start and continue to function. But we could only do that because we'd gone through an exercise like this. We'd gone to every department. We'd worked out who was critical. Um, we'd mapped the critical functions throughout the business. I think we came to 26 critical functions that had to operate um, to ensure the, the business kept going. And um, it was quite heartening. Um, I, I was just finishing the job. Um, I was about to hand it to someone else, um, but I had a new vice president um, and he was not from an airline business. Uh, and I'm thinking, no, it's not a disaster. Um, what he he was concerned about was the tax department could had to go home and then this other department had to go home because they had no lights but what was really interesting is not a single customer would have known we had a power outage the booking engine continued to work the call center continued to work the check-in continued to work aircraft were still ready on time and taken off on time so to me that was I was hugely, uh, I was very proud of that actually, because all this effort, my staff and myself, and we'd gone through all these exercises, we've talked to so many departments, we'd reorganized parts of the business, we'd made sure all our generators were in good condition, maintenance contracts in place, etc. A lot of work over several years. And then we had this major outage, and not a single customer was disrupted. And I think that's that's an example of how going through these processes and these risk assessments really does pay off in the long term. It, it, was, it was great. It was like, wow, that really worked. Um, it's not to say we never had failures. Um, and I think I told you a story of how our, our main data center failed. Um, it had been contracted out to IBM and um, the generator didn't work when we needed it. Or rather the generator started with a switchboard. There was one switchboard and the switchboard was what failed. Um, so uh, that was just after I left, but um, the point is that these, these um, risk assessments and rigorously going through these processes does pay off because when something goes wrong, you're ready for it. Hmm. Okay. Um, thanks so much, everyone. We've got a few minutes to the end. So I thought we'd, I'd just quickly do a recap so that um, we can remember what we've been through, which has been, I think, a fairly intense two days for everyone. We, we go through this exercise, we identify where we've got more risk than we should have, or, and then ask ourselves, can we reduce this risk? Can we improve our readiness for a disruption? And can we improve our response? And it's usually having a good plan, simple plan, ensuring the staff know what the plan is. Uh, and the plan is, ensuring that the priorities are clear. What is important at a failure and what is not important today? Who can go home and who needs to stay? Um, yeah. Um, so any questions there? Does everyone understand the logic of the next steps? và làm cách nào để các cái giải pháp để giảm thiểu rủi ro à, thì mình có đặt ra ba cái câu hỏi ở trên cái bảng kia ấy, thì mình có thể nghĩ là khi mà mình xây dựng cái bảng như thế này thì mình sẽ có những phương pháp như nào và mình trả lời ba cái câu hỏi đó 
À, không biết là có ai có cái thắc mắc gì không ạ? Có ai chưa hiểu được cái vấn đề này không ạ? Yeah, I think we can move on with Okay, thank you everyone. Um, shall I take charge of a screen? Yeah. So I'm just trying to find my control panel. Where's it gone? Okay. So um, this is a quick recap of the last two days. Uh, the pers purpose of the course was to develop a good working level understanding of risk continuity management and planning as applicable to a full service airline and as part of developing a core expertise in business continuity management. The agenda, the items we've covered it's the fundamentals of business continuity management. We looked at what a framework can look like, how we respond to events. Uh, we've done a bit of risk management exercise now, and we've sort of tried to apply a process across the group. Didn't quite complete, but I think we did enough for you to understand that process. One point I made at the beginning is you are complex, dynamic, interdependent, critical business. So ensuring you continue to service your customers is, is important to yourselves, it's important to your customers, and it's important to, to your nation. So business continuity is important. We briefly looked at the difference between acute or rapidly developing situations and slowly developing situations and how that impacts the business in different ways. And also that of course, very rapid situations can be an emergency. But a few examples of disruption is normal. It happens everywhere. All the airlines seem to have problems or a lot of airlines. Um, and the disruption can be really significant and it can be chronic or it can come from all sorts of things, from power, fuel, weather, volcano, war-like events, strikes, aircraft damage and computers. We briefly talked about, identified some of the very significant events that have impact aviation over time. And then I touched on what a KO requires of us and made the point that while we all know that emergencies must, we must be able to respond to emergency. It also actually says we need to maintain services and, and plan for disruptions. A KO offers us some guidance. There is an international standard on business continuity management, but like I say, I personally find it too, too detailed. We then talked about that we need a, a framework in which to respond and how do we make it dif uh, respond differently to minor routine disruption that is part of our business. And when do we have to start re responding in different ways? When do we have to think at the departmental level? And when do we have to think of a more centralized level? I offered up a, a model, a way of thinking about the business. Operational uh, functions. And in the case study, we had a lot of functions in one room and we created a, a fallback site. I then introduced the idea of what's called the four R's in the textbooks, reduce risk, be ready for an event, be able to respond to an event, 
and also be aware that they may be got a long recovery period. I, I set out how these look may look in practice, particularly with a focus on aviation emergencies and business continuity and how they are very similar, but there are differences. <clears throat> Briefly touched on resourcing and how we've got trying to balance the cost of being able to respond, the cost of generators, the cost of data centers, et cetera, so the, uh, versus the level of risk of associated with losing them. There was this, and I do have an action that I haven't forgotten. I will come back to you uh, with a link to either this or a more up-to-date version of what are typically being spent by companies. We talked about risk and we had a brief introduction into risk management and how it's linked with objectives and how the objective is really, really important because that's how you measure risk. I explained the risk management or the risk assessment process, how you identify, first you understand a criteria your objectives, then you identify risk, you analyze it. It doesn't have to be complicated. And then you evaluate and decide what you're gonna do about those risks. But also as you go, you might have to communicate and research. I introduced this very simple risk matrix. Um, there's three levels, high, low, medium, um, and showed, and then we used it in our exercises. And then today you've gone through quite a number of exercises. The first was to look at um, a very high level risk profile across the business of how the ports compare with each other, where there may be risks or heightened risk and where there probably isn't. So you can start to get a picture across the network. We then moved into this exercise of breaking into groups, deciding what department we'd represent or cons consider, and then looked at what was the purpose of a department and how did it fit within that model of the business. And also importantly, was it a real-time function or delay priority, etc. And then using the spreadsheet, which was very rapidly prepared for us, thank you. Uh, we went through this process of looking at the effect of the loss of certain service or what services were needed to keep a, a department or a function working, and then look at what would prevent that service being provided and what would be the impact and the likelihood and therefore the level of risk I and mean, then having done that, we also introduced the idea, but we've got to think about how much time have we got available before we have to recover that service for the benefit of the airline and the airline customers, essentially the airline service. And then lastly, we sort of ran out of time a bit, but the next question would be, how can we reduce that risk further? How we can be ready for a disruption? Do we have plans? Have we tested those plans? Could we perhaps have some other risk reduction measure? And then how are we going to respond? Are we going to respond as a department or as an airline to different types of disruption? And that's really where we've got to. Um, the only other material we haven't covered was just looking at recovery again uh, a few more examples of recovery, but uh, you recall I did talk about particularly how CAFE recovered after SARS and so explain that that recovery period can be quite involved and we need to be aware and the pandemic is a great example and I think you're all very focused on the challenges of recovering from a pandemic that we all face, but particularly airlines and the aviation industry some very significant challenges and risks ahead of us as the pandemic hopefully fades 
into history. So um, thank you very much indeed. Uh, have we any comments? Anyone any would like to say something? Most critically, is there something that hasn't been covered that you'd hope would be covered? Các anh chị có một câu hỏi thì uh, sau khi uh, cái buổi hai buổi giảng không ạ thì mình có một số những cái phần nào mình chưa được thực sự là con rồi chưa được chú ý không ạ? Nên chị có thể phát biểu một thầy uh, xin tích tắc. Thôi ạ, cái em đang gọi nghị ra chị thế. <cười> I don't think anyone has any questions. So if there is any, if it's okay, if we send you questions later on, if they think of any questions. Absolutely, uh, yes, please. Um, and like I say, I, I will send a link to this material. I'll also send updated slides because you will have noticed I've changed in <laughs> slides as we've gone along. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much for the past two days and thank you for, so much for all the participants. Um, for these two days, it has been quite successful, and yes, hopefully that when the situation is better, then we can actually meet you in person. That would be lovely. I haven't been to <laughs> Vietnam, and it would be beautiful, lovely to come and visit you all. Yes. You, you've been very welcoming. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can come and visit you. So. <laughs> 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 Are they asking if we can provide your email? Then whoever have individual questions, they can also have it. Is it okay? Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but be aware it is Christmas here, so I might be. A bit <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you, Olivia. Um, Mong là mọi người nếu mà có bất cứ câu hỏi gì thì có thể drop cho thầy một email để mà thầy xem xét và thầy sẽ drop lại trả lời các anh chị. Rất là cảm ơn mọi người trong hai ngày hôm nay đã học hành rất là chăm chỉ và giả. Bây giờ em mời các anh chị ở trong học online thì mình có thể bật cam lên để mình chụp một kiểu ảnh cho thầy được không ạ? Bật thầy cam lên ạ. Cô Vy con đã chụp một kiểu ảnh cho thầy được không ạ? So just stay by the you don't have to do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and, and lastly, thank you very much, Tian, and, and I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, uh, or TN2, TN2, um, for, for the support, the, 